I don't think so, dude. I don't think so. Holy fuck, bro. You're good. Really, dude? Clutch. Let's go, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Defenders. GG's. <laughs> Why Swedish are so good at video games? Hey guys, Elementrix here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought about taking a look at 5 mistakes that you are most likely doing as Breach. And I know this because I do these exact same mistakes and they have cost me to lose several rounds. And I'm pretty sure that there are more than just 5 mistakes that we Breach mains are committing. So make sure to let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else that you would add to this list. And as usual I have all the timestamps linked in the description down below in case you want to jump to any part of this video. And the final thing I want to say is that I recently partnered up with Now Drinks. So if you are someone that enjoys drinking energy drinks while gaming but don't like experiencing the jitters and the crashes, then I would definitely check out Now Drinks. They have an awesome healthy product and I can highly recommend it. You can find more information on that in the description down below. But anyways guys, if you've enjoyed this video then you already know what to do and if you're new to the channel and you really enjoy this kind of content then why not consider subscribing. So take care, stay safe and I'll talk to you guys later. Alright, so starting off with probably one of the biggest mistakes that we breach mains are committing, and that is friendly fire. How many times has a teammate of yours died right after you accidentally flashed or concussed them? And the answer is probably way too many times. Unlike some other agents in Valorant, all of Breach's abilities have the potential to friendly fire. And I believe that the length of the effects are as damaging to your team as they are to your enemy, with the exception of Aftershock, as it does more damage to your enemies than it does to your team. It is important that you call out when you are about to use one of your abilities. If your team doesn't listen and gets flashed or concussed, then you can at least say that you called it out. And if you do accidentally flash one of your teammates, then make sure you try and cover him as best as possible so he doesn't get killed by the enemy. Another important thing to note is that you need to make sure that you check the minimap before using one of your abilities. It is especially helpful when you're using your fault line as you can clearly see if there are any teammates in the way. And if they are close to where you intend to land your fault line, then you can just let them know not to move in that direction. Another mistake which is quite common as a Breach main is not initiating. Fun fact, Breach and Sova are both classified as initiators. Whilst most people think they have a completely different role in the team, the reality is that they are both extremely good at clearing certain areas or opening up a bombsite. Breach is not meant to be played as an entry fragger. Whilst he definitely has the toolkit to do so, he is most useful when using his abilities from a distance and having your team follow up in getting the entry. There is a reason his fault line can extend to cover half of a map, and it's not so that you can use it and then follow up, because by the time you get there, the enemy is no longer stunned. Same for his flashes. He can use them both from a safe distance, covering a lot of areas. And the mistake here is that you use the flashes only for yourself and not to combine it with your team. Communicate with your team and make sure you land a well-placed flash by which your team can use to their advantage. A good example here is on Double Doors or C Short on Haven. You can flash that entire room and have a jet dash forward to get an entry. It allows for much more dynamic play and faster execution. Using your aftershock correctly can be quite a challenge, and before we explain why, let's cover the purpose of Breach's aftershock ability. Its main purpose is of course to damage or kill an enemy, and here is exactly where the mistake lies, because you're only using it when you know an enemy is behind a wall or a box. So let me ask you this, how many times have you peeked a deep corner and gotten killed? You should use your aftershock to clear awkward angles or deep corners as they put pressure on the enemy to move away and expose themselves, giving you the advantage. It allows you to clear certain certain areas without putting yourself in immediate danger. I have seen several posts on reddit where people state that the aftershock ability needs a buff. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, you're using it completely wrong. Using the aftershock ability on its own should only be done so as a means to clear certain areas. If you know an enemy is hiding in a deep corner or behind a box, then make sure to use your fault line first in order to concuss them and then follow up with your aftershock. I guarantee you, only then will you realize how powerful it actually is. 
You guys won't believe the amount of times I have died because I peeked too early after using Breach's flash ability. Either the enemy was not flashed yet, the animation of taking out my gun hadn't finished, or the enemy was fully flashed but just pre-fired the spot where he was aiming before he got flashed. And something to note here is that Breach's flash ability lasts quite long, meaning it is worth to wait half a second extra before peeking as it will guarantee that the enemies are flashed and that you are ready to follow up. In addition to this, if you're flashing a certain corner, then make sure to keep the flash at body height or above. However, if your intentions is to flash a bomb site, then always try and aim it on spots higher up as they allow for more areas to be covered. And the final part of this mistake is not following up after a flash. Let's say you're in showers attacking a site on bind and land a well-placed flash on the top of the doorway. Staying in bathrooms is a mistake as you just lost a short window where the enemy was flashed and is behind cover. So make sure to follow up on your flashes if the intention is to take over a bomb site as otherwise you just wasted an ability where the enemy just went back into cover and you didn't follow up on anything. The final mistake we'll be covering in this video is waiting for the perfect moment before using your ultimate ability. I noticed in my gameplay that sometimes I wait 2 to even 3 rounds before using it, meaning all the kills I got in those rounds didn't count towards my next ult charge. Waiting for the right moment may never show up, and this doesn't mean that you just need to use it instantly and recklessly, but if you know that using your ult will contribute to you getting 1 or more kills, then it is almost always worth it, as the kills you get directly after using it count towards your next ult charge, meaning you will get it more often. And the last part I want to mention is not timing his ultimate ability correctly. I often found that I used the ultimate ability way too early just because I heard a lot of footsteps and this does not necessarily mean that they are close. The radius for step sounds is quite large and it is indicated by the faint white circle around your agent, just in case you didn't know. And people have been playing Valorant long enough now to move out of the way when they hear Breach's ult, meaning if they are on the far end of your ult range they can easily get away and catch you off guard when you push thinking they are all stunned. So it is always worth to wait an extra few seconds if you hear the steps until they are very close before using your ult.